Okay, for this class, we're gonna be working on assemblies. Now, an assembly is basically just having two separate parts that are connected in some way. A good example would be a nut that is being screwed into a bolt. That is an assembly, uh, a very simple one, but as you add more and more parts to it, your assembly becomes more and more complicated and more complex. Uh, we're gonna be going on just the very, very simple portion of today. We're gonna be making two different parts and then connecting them in a couple different ways. So we'll be starting off by making the bolt in one tab, saving it, then making the nut, saving it, and then bringing them together in a new file. So because I know that a bolt is rotationally symmetric, I'm gonna be making it with the revolve tool. So let's go ahead and use create sketch and then click on the front plane. And now I can make the top section of the cross section of a bolt. We're gonna be clicking on the line and then clicking on, on the very origin and then making a, a rough bolt shape, nothing too, too uh, artistic. But as you can see, I can click, move my mouse away, click again, and this will continue to happen until I move all the way to the center to define this shape. Now I'm gonna hit escape. Um, the bolt that I want to make is gonna be an M5 by 25. This is a bolt that we use in the assembly of our end three and I'm going to click D for dimension, and the 25, that would be the length of the threaded section, which is gonna be represented by this line here. So I can click that, pull away, click again, and hit 25, and then enter. And you can see my scale uh, has decreased. So everything is still the same shape, but my scale is now correct. Now, the dimensions that we have, because this is our uh, axis of revolution, uh, all of our dimensions over here are going to be our axial dimensions and they can stay absolutely the same. But our vertical dimensions here and here, these are going to be our radial dimensions. And if we want an M5 or a five, di five millimeter diameter threaded section, then we know this has to be divided by two because we're not setting the diameter, we're setting the radius. So I'm gonna click this line here, pull it away, click again, and I'm gonna go five divided by two, and then hit enter, and that looks good. And then a similar thing for my head, this wants to be 10 millimeters in diameter, which means I'm going to go 10 divided by two. And then finally, this, uh, the bolt head, I'm gonna make this five millimeters tall. So I can go five and then hit enter. And good news, everything is all fully defined, so we're all good there. We're just gonna go finish sketch, go over to the create menu where we have our revolve. We only have one profile made, so that is already selected. And our axis right here, we're gonna click the bottom section, hit okay, and there we go. We have almost the bolt, but we can make it much more bolt-like. Uh, we can make a new sketch on this top of the bolt right here. So we don't have to work on just the planes. We can click on any surface we want and make a new sketch. So I'm gonna click on this top section here. and I'm gonna have a, a little hexagon as if where uh, our Allen key would go into. So I can go create and then polygon. And I can click any of these, it doesn't really matter. But I do want to click the very center of our origin, pull this away and hit escape. And just like before, we wanna make this uh, nice and horizontal. And let's say the distance from there to there, uh, we want this to be uh, seven millimeters. Seven, enter, and say finish sketch. That looks good. But we don't want to extrude this outwards. We want this to be a negative extrusion, an extrusion cut. So we can still use the extrusion tool up here and select this face. But instead of clicking the arrow to pull it outwards, we actually want to pull it inwards. And when it's red, it means it is subtracting material. You can see on the distance, it actually says negative three. And on the operation, instead of join, it is saying cut, we're removing material. And we can click okay. And now this looks much more like a bolt, but we can go even further. We can add a thread to this section. So we can go create, click thread right here, and then we can click on this outer surface. 
and it kind of knows, hey, you made this five, mil fil five millimeters in diameter, uh, I bet you're making an M5 bolt. And that is exactly right, we are making an M5 bolt. And so just by clicking OK, it has actually put an image of a thread on the outside of our, uh, of our bolt, which is awesome. Uh, we also have the option of adding a modeled thread. So if I go ahead and right click uh, our thread, go edit feature, we can also click modeled. And this actually does put in uh, an M5 thread onto it, but that takes up a lot of data and we don't really need it. So we're just going to leave it as the picture of our thread. And that looks good, I'm happy with that. So I'm going to save this. Uh, I've got a little folder in here called Fusion Test. It's currently empty. So let's call this M5 Bolt. Yeah, caps lock was on, whoops. Uh, but we can save that. And then let's open up a new design over here and let's make a new bolt. Um, because I made my bolt uh, kind of more horizontal, I want to make my nut in this correct or in the same orientation as well. So I'm going to say create a sketch. Let's work on this face here. And in a very similar fashion, we're going to make a little circle. This is a five millimeter diameter circle. Again, we're going to make a polygon. And you guys should be getting pretty fast at this. Uh, let's make this 10. There we grow. And it is still rotatable, so I want to add uh, that horizontal constraint to that top bar as well. And let's say finish. And then let's extrude this up. Uh, let's call it five millimeters. That looks good. And then I can also put a thread on the inside. Even though no one's going to see it, it still looks cool. I still like it. All right, let's save this uh, again under Fusion Nuts, but we're gonna save it just as nuts. Great. And so now that I have this saved, and I can go into my data panel, and I can see, yep, I have got this, and the little uh, orange J means that me, Jake, uh, I am currently using it. Um, but let's go ahead and exit out of Nut. And I want to bring in this nut into this file. I don't want to have two separate ones. So I'm going to click and drag this into there and release. And I'll close out of that. And now you can see that I do have the nut in there and it is kind of ghosted out blue, which means, hey, um, give me a location. Where do you want it to be blue? So we've got all these kind of mess of arrows and rings everywhere. Uh, you can click and drag and move it up, down, left, right. You can also rotate it and move it any which way you want. Uh, but let's get it out of the way just so it's a little easy to see what's going on. So we're going to click OK. And now we have two parts that are kind of floating in midair. Uh, my bolt is locked in place because I brought my nut into my bolt file. So this one is floating around, doesn't really know where it wants to go. But we want to apply a joint to it. And a joint is exactly how your two parts actually interface with each other. So under the assemble, we can click on joint right here. And we've got another dialog box. And we've got this little pull down here where it's got a couple different ways that we can click and hold it all together. Uh, the first one we'll try out is called rigid. Uh, rigid is making a static joint. The two things are completely locked together. They cannot move, nothing can rotate totally fixed in place. And it's asking for some information about component one, which is gonna be our nut, and some information about component two, which will be our bolt. So I wanna click snap, and then let's get a better view of our nut. And what I'm looking for is that this face here, the very center of this circle, is absolutely lined up perfectly with this bottom face of the bolt. So you can see as I get really close up to it, this little, uh, icon right here that's attached to my mouse. This is the origin of the joint. Where is that? And you can see all these little dots all the way around. These are snapping points and I want my origin to be at the very, very dead center of that. So I click that and that said, all right, fantastic. Let's move over to the component number two, the bolt, and I'm going to do a similar thing. I've got my origin. I want it to be the dead center of this outer face right there. And as soon as I do that, this is locked in place. 
I've got my little joint icon right here. And now, even though I'm clicking and trying to drag on it, it is completely locked in place. Good to go. But let's say I want to animate, I want to have some uh, feature about it that kind of shows, hey, this is a bolt on a nut, it can twist, but it can also move linearly up and down threaded section. So I'm going to go up to joint right here on the timeline, I'm going to right click it and say, hey, I would like to edit this joint. And instead of going rigid, I actually want to go cylindrical. And what this does is it allows us to say, hey, not only can it move linearly or axially down the bolt, but we can also give it a certain degree of rotation. So let's do this again from scratch. I'm gonna delete this joint right here. So we're back to the original place where it has no location. I'm gonna click joint or J on your keyboard. But instead of having rigid, I want to have cylindrical. So now it needs a bit of information. Again, for the snap, I'm going to give it the same location. I'm saying, hey, the origin is in the center of that circle. And on our bolt, it is, I want it to be on the outer edge or this very center of the circle right here. That's where I want my datum to be. And as soon as I do that, I can click OK. And now I can kind of manipulate it a little bit like a bolt would where it isn't going perfectly but you can see that it does in fact twist around and it can move up to the final location um, with joints you can make it as complicated or as simple as you want but if you want to elevate your CAD modeling progress and all of your studying that you're doing in this this is a really fantastic place to start